In this section of the course we are going to integrate Stripe payments. In this video, first I will show you how, what a customer experience is when uh, they want to pay with Stripe. Then I will show you how in the admin you can set up your checkout page and your Stripe credentials. And lastly, I will show you how you can get your Stripe credentials in case you are not familiar with Stripe and you don't have a Stripe account. First, let me log in as a member. So I'm clicking on login. Member at gmail.com is the fake member account that we have in this uh, demo application by default. The password is 12341234, so you log in. And you can see the member dashboard. So these are the courses that this uh, fake member uh, has already purchased. And the course that we are going to purchase will be the German Intermediate course. In order to be able to buy a course, let's uh, click on courses in the header. Then we will see or, or all our fake courses in this demo application. And let's scroll down and the German Intermediate course is the one that we are after. So click on go to, go to course. And as you can see, we have the option to buy this course for $555.55. So let's click on buy now and we will be navigated to the checkout page. On the left side of the checkout page, you see the contact information and the billing address. Now, this data will have to be provided by the customer, except for the phone and the apartment information, but all the other fields are required. In our demo application, only registered users can navigate to the checkout, so the email address field is populated automatically. As you can see, we have member.gmail.com populated in this field and then this field is made read only so there is no way to change the value on this field um, at least on the front end when we are uh, when we are doing the checkout on the right side of the checkout you see the checkout and payment section and here you can see the product that is to be purchased and this is the german intermediate course and the price of this product Below this checkout and payment section, you see the select the payment method section. And I only enabled Stripe for this, uh, uh, for this example. And if I click on credit card by Stripe, you see that the Stripe fields appear. And below the payment method section, there is this uh, red square. And this is actually you know, a checkbox where we force the customer to accept the terms and conditions and the privacy policy before starting the payment. So if I click on it and click on this checkbox, then this red square becomes green and everything is fine. So the customer will be able to start the payment. However, of course, the customer first must provide the contact info and the billing address info. But you see that we have this fill in dummy info button here. So if you click on this button, then some dumb, dummy info will be at your disposal. So you will not have to uh, manually provide the first name, last name, and so on and so on when you are testing this demo application and you can just start the payment flow. I will show you an example Stripe payment and actually I will show you one where we have 3D secure validation. So let's navigate to this uh, URL. Uh, later in the course we will get back to this URL so while I'm uh, integrating Stripe for you. But what I wanted to show you here is that we can use this test card number to get a uh, get a pop-up model like this one here as you can see and this is like a mock 3d secure validation so let me, i think i already copied this uh, car number and let me just provide it here okay the cv the uh, expiry should be something that is valid so something in the future all right and the cvv should be one two three or whatever you want um, it should be, you know, uh, three, three, uh, three digits and, and that's it. Now after that, we can click on uh, complete purchase and you will see that a spinner will uh, appear here that is, on, uh, that is on our side, so it doesn't come from Stripe. However, you will see that the model window will appear in which we can uh, confirm the payment. So let me just click on click to complete purchase. The spinner is here. And we are waiting for Stripe now. And indeed, we have this model window, 3D Secure 2 test page. This is a test 3D Secure 2 authentication. 
In live mode, customers will be asked to verify their identity with a push notification, a text message or another method chosen by their bank. So for now, in this test uh, 3D Secure authentication, I can just click on complete and then Stripe will complete the purchase. And of course, after the successful purchase, we will also uh, create the order for the customers. And then this, uh, this member that we are logged in with will have access to the German uh, intermediate course. Okay, let's click on complete. There will be a processing model that comes from us, from our demo application, and we have the order confirmation. Thank you for your purchase. And we can click on uh, go to dashboard. And as you can see, the German intermediate course appeared in our table. So the um, customer here, a member at gmail.com is associated with this course and can uh, start learning. Now let's go uh, and log in as an admin and I will show you how you can customize the checkout page and what you have to provide for your Stripe integration to work. So I'm going to log out now and I'm going to log in as an admin. So our admin is uh, admin, uh, admin, our admin account is admin at gmail.com and the password is 12341234. Click on login and we will shortly arrive in the admin dashboard. Here we are. What is important for us now is the payment management. So click on payment management and let's click on settings. These are basically the checkout settings. As you can see, there are two sections basically, the payment settings where we can customize our checkout and the payment gateway settings where we can enable or disable Stripe. And of course we can do the, we can do the same for Braintree and the PayPal smart buttons. However, for us for now, only this field is important because this is the Stripe integration section of the course. So let's scroll up. You can select a currency and if you checked the Braintree section of the course, then uh, you know that for Braintree, your merchant account determines what currency will be the customer charged in. So it doesn't matter what currency you choose here, Braintree will always charge it in the merchant account. And of course, if you're using Braintree, it is very important to have this harmony between the currency here and your merchant account. However, with Stripe, it works a bit differently because the currency that you choose here will be the basis on which the customer will be charged. So if I select Euro here, uh, so you are, and uh, I provide only the Stripe option for the customer to pay, then the customer will be billed in Euro. And of course, Euro will be shown on our front end as well. However, if I change to uh, USD, change back to USD, then the customer will be billed in USD. The next option is use integer prices. Now, if you're working with USD, then you probably don't want to use integer prices because it's usual that uh, USD prices have decimals. However, there are certain currencies that, that don't really use decimal numbers. So if you use integer prices or if you set this option to yes, then it doesn't matter even if in the back end there is a decimal price, it will be rounded to an integer price and your customers in the demo application will only see the integer prices. However, I don't need to use integer prices because I will stick with USD. Now there is the other option, use currency symbol. Now if you select USD, Euro or British pounds, then um, uh, and, and if you select yes or set this field to yes, then on the front end, you will see the USD symbol instead of the USD text, the Euro symbol instead of the EUR text and the British pound symbol instead of the GBP text. If you selected another currency, then it doesn't matter if you set this option to yes or no, you will see the text of the currency. In my opinion, it's nice to use the currency symbol for these three currencies. So in our uh, backend, we only provided the currency symbols for these three currencies. This is why we uh, declare it in a description that it only works if you use these three currencies. So, you know, if you, if you are using these currencies, I think it's good to use the symbol because it just looks a bit nicer on the front end. The next option you have is using the comma for separating decimals. So by default, this is set to no, or I mean, for me, it is set to no, because when you work with USD, then the usual way is to use the period for separating the decimals and to use the comma for separating the, the thousands. 
However, if your customers are from Germany, then you might want to set this to yes, because in Germany, the usual way is to use the comma for separating the decimals and the period as a thousand separator. However, I will not change this. So these were the options for customizing your checkout. And in the payment gateway settings uh, section, what we are interested in is this enable Stripe field. It has to be set to yes if you want to use Stripe, obviously. Now I uh, disable Braintree and uh, I, I disable the PayPal smart buttons and I only enable Stripe. So for me, only the, uh, only the Stripe option will be shown as I uh, showed you in the, um, in the example checkout a few minutes ago. However, of course, if you want uh, the customers to be able to use Braintree and the PayPal smart buttons as well, you can enable them as well. So it, it doesn't matter from the front-end integration, from, from the point of view of our demo application, it doesn't matter if anything else is enabled uh, uh, besides Stripe or not. If you are finished with your settings, so if you, if you set everything you wanted, then you can save the page. However, first, make sure that you have provided all the data that is uh, needed for the Stripe to work well. So let's click on the Stripe menu item here. And here you can see what you have to provide in order for Stripe to, to function well. First, you have to select the environment. So it has to be test or live. Now, obviously, I'm selecting test environment, and I think that you should also select test environment to, to test our integration. Uh, and what you need when you select the test environment is your Stripe test publishable key and your test secret key. Once you have these, save them, and then you can go back to the settings and save your settings as well. However, if you don't know how to get these um, how to get these keys, and don't worry, because now I'm going to show you where you can get these keys from. We have to navigate to dashboard.stripe.com. Now, if you already have a Stripe account, you have to log in. If not, you have to sign up. Of course, I already have an account, so I will just uh, log in to my account. And soon my dashboard will appear. Okay, it's a bit slow today. All right, we're still loading, but yes, here we are. Here you see your email address with which you registered with Stripe. I suggest you verify this email address. Uh, but what is important uh, for us now is to get your test API keys. So you can just uh, click on get your test API keys. And you see that your publishable key is here. You can copy it and the secret, your secret key is here. You can click on reveal test key and then copy your test key. Now, obviously, uh, copy the publishable key to this test publishable key field here and copy your secret key after you have revealed it to your test secret key field here and then you can save your um, Stripe settings. Of course, make sure that the environment is test if you are using the test publishable key and the test secret key. Now, obviously, if you want to test your Stripe integration production, you have to set this to live and then you have to provide your live publishable key and live secret key. However, I think that uh, at the point where you are confident enough to test uh, your Stripe integration live, then you will know how to get your live API keys. As you can see with this account, I don't have any live API keys yet. And there is one more very important thing with Stripe and 3D Secure 2. So if you want to use the 3D Secure flow with your Stripe, then you have to go to settings in your dashboard. Oh, it's a bit slow, it's still loading. And you have your radar rules. So you have radar, the radar option or section here. Monitor fraud with machine learning. So what you have to do is to click on rules and make sure that this is uh, active or this is selected. Request 3D Secure if 3D Secure is required for card. A few minutes ago, I showed you an example checkout and uh, there was this model window that appeared. Now, th it was, that was the test 3D Secure authentication. Now, in order to uh, get that model window, then make sure that this option is uh, active for you and not the other two options. So just to quickly sum up before we actually start integrating Stripe. 
you should uh, log into your dashboard. You can go to overview. You should get your API keys. Then uh, copy your API keys here. Save your Stripe settings. Then go back to your settings. Customize your checkout. Make sure to enable Stripe. Save these settings. And then we can go on.